I can't believe how many salmon are in this pool. This is kind of typical, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, this is starting in about mid-August. This is the norm. We'll come up here and, I mean, we can look down and see hundreds of them right now. Yeah, yeah. Has anybody ever tried to work out just how many salmon come into this one creek yeah. in one so, run? So back in the 90s, they used to have a weir out front, so they would count how many would come through. And I'm not sure the exact numbers, but they took that down and I mean every single tide when we look on that bank, we're seeing thousands of fish push in. Yeah. There's a spot down there, it was probably over a mile and there was salmon everywhere all the way along. But I can't get over well how many you catch because <laughs> back home in the UK, you know, if you get two in a day sometimes that will be maximum. And yet you get kind of blase here. Do you fish much yourself? Uh, when I get time. Uh, in the Mainly evening. just watching other people. Yeah, that, and that's pretty much for me, that's enough. Coming yeah. out here, seeing you catch a few fish. Yeah. In the evenings, I'll come down, I'll, I'll throw my rod out for about an hour or so, catch a couple here and there, but just going out with guests and seeing them get excited and happy, that, that's enough for me. I don't know how many we've caught in a few days, but just the sheer power each time. Single-handed rod, quite heavy line, 15, 19 pound and they just disappear over the horizon. Yeah. It's brilliant. And, and right when you set the hook too, they yeah. shoot off like a rocket. It's fantastic. <laughs> that one long run, they'll come back, do a couple yeah. of jumps. Yeah. And then they see the net You never man. get the big kings here, the, the Chinooks. Too, too shallow? Too shallow. Um, yeah, I mean, this is a small creek. Yeah. The, it's a small creek, but it's stuffed with fish. Yeah, yeah and the, the area for, for the kings to spawn, it's not good here just because it's so shallow. Mm. They need deeper water, faster moving current. But this is perfect for the silvers. They um, are bright silver as well. Yeah. You know, we've got a mile, mile and a half now from the sea and they're still bright silver. When do they start to turn? Uh, once they've been in the river for about a week or two, they'll start to turn. And then when we go up to the lake up there, uh, after they've been here for about three weeks to a month, they'll start to get that reddish hue to them. Yeah. And after it's been over a month, they'll turn just a bright red color, similar the, to the color the of your jacket. That, that kite. Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful Great. fishing. What is weird for me is that all the time I'm fishing and loving the fishing, I'm still kind of looking over my shoulder for a bear. We don't do that in Scotland. No. <laughs> we don't do that anywhere else. No, this place is special. But I don't it... get spooked by them at all now. If you said to me last week before I left the UK, I would be six feet from a bear, I would go, I wouldn't be within a hundred yards of a bear. No, I just think they're okay. Yeah. And that's happened every day we've been here. Yeah, every day. So six every feet. Day. Yeah. But just not. Right there, and you just, you respect them, you're just quiet, and they, they don't seem to register mostly, they just move on by, don't they? No. I mean, uh, their own, you can kind of think of us like a seagull. We're just out there, we let them do what they want to do, and they come on by. But, I mean, up here is, it's special, it's different. You wouldn't want to do this down in like the lower 48 or Yellowstone. You wouldn't want to get that close to a bear. But these bears, um, a lot of these bears we've seen uh, almost every day since they've been born, or at least in the summer. Mm. And so they're used to seeing people, and the people respect them. We let them do what they want to do. We don't get in their way, we don't feed them. Um, so to them, we're just, we're just another seagull out here standing around. I don't know at what point, you, when Americans come here, Brits come here, people come here from all over the world, Dutch people this week were fishing with us as well. I don't know at what point you go away to somewhere else and go, these are different bears. I don't know how you choose. You certainly don't go anywhere near polar bears, for starters. No way you could do what we've been doing. I don't know how you, how you decide that this is, these are not the same animals. Yeah. Well, there's only a few unique places like this around Alaska on the coast. Um, like Katmai National Park is one, mm -hmm. McNeil River is another area. Uh, but it's mainly just the national parks in Alaska where there's similar programs or the people follow the similar protocols. Mm. So if you go anywhere else, I, 
you don't want to do what we've been doing here. Yeah. It's almost the opposite. You want to give them as much space as possible. Mm -hmm. You don't want to approach them. You want to view them from a distance. And if you do see them from far off, definitely don't walk towards them. You want to walk away. And never run away. Never run. Do you think you've got the best job in the world? I sure do. I do. <laughs> Every day I just wake up and I look around out here and yeah. I mean, this is heaven. Yeah. How could you not be happy? I know. It's, it's just brilliant.